Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Vineo's webinar about insights into the flexitarian lifestyle and how the food industry can answer the consumer needs related to this impressive plant-based boom. Before we begin, let me quickly go over the practicalities. Today's webinar will take approximately 30 to 45 minutes and will be simultaneously broadcasted in English and Spanish. We will present a combination of consumer insights and practical plant-based recipes and we'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. Underneath and at the side of the presentation on your screen, you can find the Q&A entry box. Here you can enter any questions you might have during this webinar. And if your particular question cannot be covered during this session, we will answer them to you personally afterwards. And for those of you that wish to receive our slides, we are happy to share the handouts with you. Simply write your question in the same Q&A box. So, flexitarianism, what it's about? Well, the plant-based topic is one of the key macro trends in today's food market, and we see the need for, sol for solutions in a variety of applications and going from a part-time vegetarian to a 100% vegan lifestyle and everything in between. In a minute, I will give you a closer look into the flexitarian consumer and what the available market potential is in some dairy-free and meat-free segments. And I'm joined today by Isabel Troch from our R&D department, who will showcase various recipes where our plant-based ingredients offer the best technical improvements and deliver on taste and texture too. We will mainly focus on plant-based dairy and chocolate, but towards the end, we will also quickly touch upon the meat-free markets. So, first a glimpse at the overall plant-based market scene and the consumer type buying mainly into these foods and drinks. Over the past few years, we've seen plant-based innovations transform from really a trend to a revolution and now into a mainstream phenomenon. Consumers across the globe are weaving all kinds of plant-based elements into their daily shopping, from clothes and accessories to cosmetics and laundry products, and certainly also food and drink choices. Now, often food-related consumer habits come and go as fads, but plant-based foods are no fad at all. They are here to stay and grow, and this is reflected in current sales figures, continuous innovations, and the media attention it keeps getting across the globe. Consumers are embracing plant-based enthusiastically, and it can appeal to nearly one in two consumers across the globe. The drive for plant-based stretches from strict diets like veganism through to flexitarian consumers who are just looking for more variety and at reducing a bit more their meat and dairy intake. This interest is reflected in new product developments. And what's important to mention is that the growth of vegetarian innovation has been rather modest over the last few years, while vegan claims have been taking off tremendously. But also a general plant-based claim is fast emerging and we see that tendency occurring everywhere. The more plants strategy appeals a lot, so the market is certainly bigger than vegan and vegetarian. We are indeed not all turning to a very strict diet. There is definitely a tendency that is growing but in our global plant-based survey, only 7% of consumers identified themselves as being either vegan, vegetarian or pescatarian. We do have a more robust opportunity to cater to a larger consumer group that's interested in eating plant-based. And those are the flexitarians or the flexible vegetarians. Mapping out the opportunities, you'll see that in some markets here, we find a larger sample of flexitarians than in others. Although in the Americas, they are quite unified with about one in five choosing this lifestyle. And in Europe, we find quite some differences. The one to highlight perhaps is Germany, where flexitarianism is really the new name of the game. Even though meat consumption is still high here, plant-based foods are also no longer niche. Less and less Germans eat meat every day. And finally, in Asia Pacific, you find most vegetarians today in China, which is also no surprise, as in the past, the traditional Chinese diet was also almost entirely plant-based. 
But plant-based foods are gaining traction everywhere and it is predicted that it will continue an upward trajectory. So let's take a closer look at who these flexitarians really are before we deep dive into some opportunities because they are the ones driving the growth and need for innovation. As mentioned, the flexitarian consumer likes a very diverse menu and their lifestyle encourages eating less meat and fish, but more plant-based foods. Looking at some social demographics, the lifestyle finds a bit more favor with women. However, that's not significantly different compared to men. And the same goes for age. We don't really see a tendency towards age-related groups so it's a lifestyle that finds favor with all. Most of these consumers say to have a comfortable to very comfortable income. And that's good as well, as we know that plant-based food and drinks often come with a higher price tag. Our consumers here in the spotlight, they are basically striving for a better balance in life. They are highly aware that a good diet is important for health with 50% saying to really pay attention to their food and drinks choices and they are interested in new and healthy foods. This is also again reflected in the 73% to saying to keep a close eye on everything on pack. So we could say we have a very health savvy and conscious consumer in front of us and this is showing in that shopping behavior as well. These consumers significantly say to take more active steps to make their diet more healthy. To realize this, they pay, as mentioned, a lot of attention to how food is made and what's inside. An important reason to buy plant-based is the more natural image. It has, and you see here, that they are really looking for products as pure and less processed as possible. And they also share a higher interest in specific product labels, such as the one related to quality and traceability. Besides all of that, not to forget that these consumers like to see themselves as foodies. And we've seen again, especially that flexitarians are trying to keep up with the latest trends and hypes, following, for instance, chefs on social media to get more inspiration and reach that very diverse diet. Coming now to a first opportunity, the plant-based dairy or dairy alternatives, as often called, they have really gone from being trendy to being on fire with a widespread segment. And nowadays that brings a nice variety into the daily diet. Let me start by mapping out first the market of milk alternatives. For the reason that this is the largest alternative product category and on the other subsegments like plant-based yogurts and desserts, I'll come back in a minute. So first, plant the milk alternatives. Over the last few years, these plant-based drinks have really accumulated very nice volumes. Consumption is traditionally high in Asia, so no surprise that in terms of global revenue, this region also has the highest market value. This is followed by West Europe and North America. In terms of category growth, Asia is then again the region with the slowest estimated growth but this is because it's the more mature market. And most other regions are still looking at a substantial six to nine Kager until 2026. Only one exception being Eastern Europe with a remarkable double digit growth um, as expected. Now the plant-based dairy industry as mentioned is one of the largest and most dynamic ones with a range of alternatives that has expanded far beyond the milk-like formats. However, also here we see that plant-based drinks are the biggest category and it is reflecting still in the innovations where we see the most new product launches in the last three years. Other than this segment, the innovation activities have also been high in plant-based spoonable yogurts and in processed cheese types. Perhaps one other, uh, worthwhile mentioning is plant-based ice cream launches. Now what's motivating consumers to buy in these options that's often supported by a combination of health drivers, the more natural image and certainly also some environmental, sustainable or ethical concerns. Staying a bit on the health topic, 
we've actually tested the list of health claims to see which ones would convince consumers to buy a certain alternative product. And we see that the use of natural ingredients clearly tops the wish list. So I cannot stress it enough. The natural image of plant-based food and drinks is really key. And you see that again on third place where an additive free claim takes a seat. But looking at the overview and the ratings, you see that all health claims are highly important. So even those mentioned here at the bottom, like around fat content and calories, they can play their role definitely in this dairy alternative segment. Besides this, taste and texture remains important too. It's about losing the dairy and not the indulgence. And dairy alternatives often have to compete on sensory features such as creaminess and flavor. In our plant-based research, we see that nearly half of global flexitarians keep in mind a pleasant taste and texture. And a similar amount says they would even like to see more tastier options in store. So definitely an important aspect to work on. Very specifically, we see that consumers would appreciate if plant-based options would have a similar full-bodied mouthfeel as to regular dairy. That's the texture element. And finally, consumers also would like to see even more variation in store and consumers can't seem to get enough of these plant-based drinks. But also yogurt types are on the wish list, so we see. Isabel, I believe we have some great solutions to make sure consumers can keep enjoying taste, texture and health in the segment. Can you please share more on this with the audience? Um, Indeed, Jolien, um, we have many ingredients in our portfolio that can be used to make nutritious food products with a great taste and texture. Our functional fibers, functional carbohydrates, specialty rice ingredients and functional proteins are all coming from natural sources and they offer technical and physiological benefits in all type of food applications. We can use several Baleo ingredients to replace dairy-based components and make delicious dairy alternatives. Today, we will focus on our rice ingredients, but we can include, of course, also other Baleo ingredients in dairy-free products, as you will notice later on in our recipe examples. When you look to these microscopical pictures, you can clearly notice that our starch granules from rice, that these are the smallest amongst all other starch granules from other botanical origin. So if you compare, for example, potato starch, you can see that rice starch granules are 10 times smaller. They are similar in size to that of fat globules and therefore rice starch can be added to mimic or improve the creamy and smooth mouthfeel of your products. We have different types of rice starches in our range and the majority are natural clean label or organic starches while having also modify, modified starches available in our portfolio. The unique molecular structure of rice amylose and rice amylopectin will contribute to a stable food product, both in shelf life as well as in freeze dough stability. The neutral color and taste of rice starch and flour ensure that there is no need to overcompensate an off taste with flavorings. All our rice ingredients are gluten-free, dairy-free, free free from eggs and additives. The natural image backed up by the fact that rice is hypoallergenic and highly digestible makes rice ingredients fit perfectly in the current clean label market trends. Different clean label rice ingredients can be used in dairy alternatives. Rice starch or rice flour can be added to improve the texture or the body 
and the creamy smooth mouthfeel, while rice powder and rice syrup can be used as main bulking agents to make dairy-free solutions. And rice syrup can also contribute to the overall flavor profile. Rice ingredients can be used in several types of dairy applications, as you can see on these pictures. For example, plant-based desserts or frozen desserts, fermented products, spreads, drinks, and other dairy-free products, such as plant-based cheese, culinary creamer or whipping cream, and so on. Depending on the final application, we can offer you the most suitable Beigno ingredients. The Beigno Technology Center has already developed a whole range of prototype recipes that you can further adapt based on your recipe and process conditions. During this webinar, we, be, we will present you only a few recipes, so feel free to contact us afterwards for more information about other food products. So here an example of um, a plant-based coffee creamer. In this recipe, dried rice syrup is used as bulking agent to make a rice-based dairy alternative. And it is contributing to the body, mouthfeel and overall taste. This new dried rice syrup is a clean label and allergen-free ingredient that is obtained from rice. It is a powder with a slightly sweet taste. Furthermore, this rice syrup, together with our fava bean protein concentrates, are contributing both to the whitening effect of this coffee creamer. We are happy to announce that Benio is launching a new range of fava bean ingredients that can be used in various applications such as in bakery, cereal, dairy, and meat products. And in this recipe, a natural cook-up rice starch is added to provide a creamy mouthfeel thanks to its small starch granules. Thus, this rice-based coffee creamer is lifting up your coffee to a higher level by adding color, a pleasant flavor, and a great mouthfeel to your cup. Within our laboratory, we have tested also the foam properties of our rice-based coffee creamer to check if it's also possible to use it for barista type of applications. And of course, it's possible. Our trials showed that this creamer had a good overrun, a great foam quality, and that the foam was soft and had fine bubbles. Thus, our plant-based coffee creamer can be used in different ways to add creamy deliciousness to your favorite coffee drink. We have developed very recently also new recipes for, for example, an oat-based coffee creamer, a plant-based culinary creamer that can be added in a sauce or a soup, and many more. And here is another great dairy alternative recipe. It is a cashew-based fermented spread that is comparable in appearance, taste and texture to the dairy-based spreadable processed cheese that is commonly consumed in Latin America. Different Beigno ingredients are included in this recipe. Rice starch and rice flour are added as clean label texturizers that are providing a good body and viscosity a uh, spreadable texture and a smooth and creamy mouthfeel. In water-based systems, long-chain inulin has the unique property to form a three-dimensional network under high shear, which we call a rafty creaming effect. And after this shearing step, the dispersed inulin granules in this gel have a similar size as fat droplets and they texturize the water face, which is resulting in a creamy mouthfeel. Besides being a natural texturizer, inulin can therefore be used as fat replacement, depending on the inulin type used and the dosage added. 
As inulin is also a soluble fiber, it's possible to make a source of fiber claim and additional health claims depending on your local legislation. And faba bean protein in this recipe is contributing to the typical texture of this spreadable product. This fermented spread has a pleasant taste and a very nice glossy appearance, and it's also a totally vegan solution. This spread can be uh, consumed on a bread slice, uh, in a sandwich or on appetizer cookies, but it can also be used as cheese ingredients in uh, culinary applications at home, like in different types of sauces, uh, as a dip sauce or to put on wraps and so on. So thanks to Benio ingredients, the plant-based spread has a creamy and smooth mouthfeel, a spreadable texture and a nice gloss and taste. And it's beamed up with our chicory root fibers to increase your daily fiber intake. And now, Jolien, um, let's see what is next for the dairy alternatives. Yes, so to close this dairy alternatives chapter, I still want to give you a glimpse of what's currently ongoing and next to shape this category. First of all, matching the taste and texture of dairy. We've just seen that a majority is looking for a similar mouthfeel as to traditional dairy products and not in all of the segments, it's an easy set and done. This brings me to plant-based cheese innovation, as nicely shown by Isabel and our um, cashew flavored spread. We already see that the segment is changing, innovation is ongoing, uh, but it's really hard to mimic a regular cheese. So definitely more work to be done uh, to get that specific taste and texture. And finally, a better nutritional profile. We've also learned that consumers are looking for those, meaning having more nutrients in like fiber, minerals, vitamins, and quality protein. But also calcium enrichment can be an issue, in particular for kids' targeted products. So keep that in mind. Moving now to perhaps still a smaller market, but a booming one as well, plant-based chocolate. Manufacturers, both artisanal and multinational, are launching vegan chocolates, very often still in the traditional tablet format, but you can also find them in some chocolate chunks, drops, and more included in sweet categories too. Building on some new product innovations to see what's ongoing, you can see there's almost a global consensus of what's trending in all areas, vegan options are gaining grants a lot, with the largest share of vegan innovations going uh, in the Americas and Europe. But also Australia and New Zealand are going strong, both in vegan and generally plant-based chocolate. For sure, the increase uh, is fueled by the use of plant-based milks, and that's certainly an element that keeps uh, stimulating that growth. But as you know, most consumers are no full-time vegans, so we have to find out which elements play a role when buying plant-based sweets. When it comes to confectionery, very often taste is an important driver. However, in the case of plant-based sweets, there are some other criteria as well. The number one driver for each country we've surveyed, you can find on the right side and the global average in the chart. We first find that consumers buying these plant-based confectionaries are the more natural and healthier image. We've seen that tendency with the other segments too, so sweets are no exception. Even though confectionery products aren't typically health foods, flexitarians do expect to see plant-based sweets with certain nutritional benefits. Then the matter of taste and variety is on the list and we know that plants and indulgence can go hand in hand. We have a really nice chocolate recipe upcoming for you in some minutes. And something to highlight here also is that in Germany and the UK, buyers care more for these products being better for animal welfare and the planet, more than for taste. 
So in these markets, we also have to make sure to address the elements as well. So taste and texture, as mentioned, generally remains king. Uh, our study shows that nearly one in two plant-based sweet shoppers are taking a pleasant taste and texture into account when shopping. And another one in three, almost, I would say, the full indulgence aspect. And there aren't enough of these vegan sweets and stories yet. One in three wants to see more dairy-free chocolates in the supermarket. Texture certainly plays an important aspect as well. And that's confirmed with three in four consumers attaching a big importance to dairy-free chocolates. They should have a similar mouthfeel as regular dairy-based options. And we've also seen such feedback in our video research. One example being Kate from the UK, and she exactly says that she still rather switches between types of chocolates because of the creaminess she can't find back in current vegan substitutes. So today for her, it's more the sustainability side that convinces to buy into vegan chocolate, but I'm sure that in the future, we might be able to convince her more of the yumminess too. This brings me to our lovely rice ingredients that can perfectly serve as creamy dairy alternatives. In our plant-based survey, we have tested several plant-based sources which could act as an alternative to animal-based ingredients like soy, pea, faba bean and more. And rice scored as a plant-based source in bakery and sweets as one of the top graders next to some more popular and trending types like almond and coconut. So definitely wonderful news. And we've deep dived a little bit more into the topic. We've also interviewed shoppers on their initial reaction to finding rice-based ingredients on products. And here's a selection of what we've heard. Rice is basically perceived as very nutritious, as healthy, low in calories, bringing less fats, and when compared to other grains, a definite winner. It's basically got the label of being a good grain with lots of positives. And as Isabel explained earlier, it can bring some technical benefits too. So here we have a delightfully dairy-free and milk-like chocolate, which has as a base a rice powder to replace milk and brings at the same time some smoothness and a very good snap too. Isabel, can you tell us again how this recipe looks like and how we can make it? Yes, of course, Jolien. So on this slide, you find the basic recipe of a plant-based cocoa bar that is created in our new chocolate laboratory in Belgium. The process to make dairy-free chocolate with rice powder inside is comparable to the preparation of a regular milk chocolate. So we have first a mixing step, followed by a refining step, the conching step, afterwards the tempering, and finally the molding step. If you are interested to know how we make our chocolates in our lab, Please feel free to ask it in the Q&A box and we are happy to share afterwards with you a link with, uh, to our short chocolate movie. So in this recipe, we use the rice powder to replace all the milk powder. It is a blend of dried rice syrup, rice starch and rice flour. It is a powder ingredient and also clean label again and it has a slightly sweet taste. Besides using it in dairy-free chocolate, it can of course also be used as bulking agent in dairy alternative products, such as dairy alternative drink, dessert, fermented products, and so on. And as the milk powder is removed from this recipe, we can no call it legally a chocolate. So therefore we have used here plant-based cocoa bar as sample name. But please check your local legislation for this. Um, this uh, chocolate or cocoa bar has a nice taste and sweetness, a good snap, a smooth texture, uh, so no graininess is observed because the particle so size is smaller than 30 micrometer 
and it has also a very good melting behavior. If you are curious to know how it tastes, please feel free to contact us afterwards and we are happy to set up a meeting with you and bring our delicious plant-based cocoa bar samples with us to taste together. And uh, Jolien, uh, what can we conclude for this part? Yes, to conclude, what's next for this industry? We've seen that plant-based and especially vegan claim is continuing to see popularity. And to take it to a next level, we'll have to align with more and other premium attributes, such as better for you credentials, be able to stimulate the senses and keep the sustainability angle more in focus. One way to do this is by aligning these products with specific attributes, so thinking about sugar, fat, generally calorie content matters, uh, as consumers expect that these plant-based products do have a healthier profile. We see that chocolate brands are certainly also innovating around textures, flavors and colors, while keeping in mind the appetite for premium and health. And finally, not to forget about ingredient transparency and traceability, as for many consumers, sustainability isn't a nice to have anymore. It's a must have. And also more local production, sourcing, those are items that are valued. So high quality plant based ingredients can definitely find or earn their spot on the ingredients list. Now, there's one other plant-based industry we, ha we haven't touched upon yet today, and that's the plant-based meat and fish. This is for sure another important application that's growing in popularity, as more and more consumers are questioning the consumption of meat and fish, and certainly the effects they have on the environment and on our health. I do not plan to deep dive into this market, but just touch upon the fact that also in this market, taste and texture matters as well as the convenience aspects. So listening to what would encourage consumers to buy more of the meat and fish alternatives, tastier products came out as a very important attribute. Very specifically, the category buyers would like to see these options to be tender and easy to chew. Similar to traditional meats and also bring some juiciness is about finding or mimicking a similar taste and texture as the real deal. Formats that consumers would like to see more of depend on the country's specific eating habits, but taking it from a global perspective, the usual suspects score high. And we are talking then about sausages, burgers, chicken strips, and a minced meat alternative. These are all formats that are quite easy to integrate in the daily diet, and they reflect the need for convenience and easy swapping. Isabel, I believe we have some plant proteins in the portfolio that are suited to make delicious counterparts. Um, yes, Jolien, we have our textured wheat proteins in our range that can be used to make delicious meat alternative products. We have different types of textured wheat proteins. Uh, with different protein contents and different particle size. So you can select the right type depending on the needed properties for your final meat or fish substitute. Meat as such has a good perception. It is well known by many consumers and it is a local crop. So in our process, there are no processing aids used and therefore you can label it as ingredient. Our textured wheat proteins uh, contain at least 60% proteins on dry matter. So they are a good source of protein and they are also rich in many essential amino acids. They have a fast hydration and are good free store stable, whereby they are ideal to use in challenging process conditions, such as in frozen vegan ready meals. Once hydrated, the textured proteins form a stable structure that is very similar to that of ground minced meat in terms of chewability. They are relative neutral in taste and as you can see on the picture at the right, they have a light time beige color 
when they are in dry state. And thanks to this light color, they can easily be used in chicken imitation products, or you could also add a natural texturizer to give them a darker color if needed. So our textured wheat proteins can be easily added in your recipe and it will result in an affordable solution with a pleasant mouthfeel, a meat-like texture and a great taste. Our textured wheat proteins can be incorporated in a wide range of meat or fish alternatives. They can be added to make delicious beef imitation products with a meat-like texture, such as burger, balls and vegetable patties. We have also a special type that can be used to make very juicy, tender and white chicken imitation products. For example, nuggets, filet and pieces. And another type has very good properties to imitate the texture and appearance of fish, fish such as tuna, fish sticks or fish burger. And we can of course make also vegan or vegetarian sausages with a great texture and mouthfeel and a nice taste like a white sausage or a uh, vegan merguez. And last but not least, our textured wheat proteins can also be used as meat or fish replacer in different types of fresh or frozen prepared meals. For example, in plant-based lasagna or pasta sauce, in veg vegetarian Asian stir-fry dishes, in meat-free dim sum fillings and so on. We can provide you prototype recipes and additional information afterwards if you want to learn more about our textured wheat proteins. And I would like to inform you that we have developed also delicious recipes for other plant-based applications such as plant-based muffin or plant-based dressing and so on. So to conclude with, I would like to come back on our product portfolio. So we have four different product lines and all our own ingredients are coming from natural sources, such as chicory root, sugar beet, rice, wheat and fava bean. Benio's ingredients offer functional and physiological benefits. For example, inulin and oligofructose are soluble chicory root fibers, thus they can be added to increase the daily fiber intent intake, but they can also be used to reduce, for example, the sugar or fat content of your food products. Palatinols can be used for sucrose replacement, while isomols can be added to remove a part or the total amount of added sugars. Rice ingredients can be used as clean label texturizers to obtain a smooth and creamy mouthfeel or to make gluten-free products and our different types of plant proteins or increasing the protein content in your food products while also having some technical benefits. Furthermore, um, several health claims can be made when incorporating our ingredients in your food products. For example, the reduced blood glucose response claim, improved digestive health, prebiotic, tooth friendly and many more claims are possible, depending of course also on your local legislation. You can find Benio ingredients in all kinds of food applications, uh, such as beverages, baby food, dairy and dairy alternatives, bakery products, confectionery, cereals, meat and meat alternatives, vegetables, soups and sauces. Besides food grade ingredients, where we focused on in this webinar, uh, Benio has also feed and pharmaceutical grades available. So I believe we covered everything we had for you for today, but as promised, um, we spared time to answer some of your questions. Um, let's have a look. We received quite a few of questions. 
I can see um, some are very specific and it's maybe perhaps too detailed uh, for everyone in this audience group. So we will come certainly back on these afterwards. Um, I can see also a few that would be interested for the majority of the people of today. Uh, something about faba bean ingredients, another about health uh, choices for consumers. Um, Okay, but uh, let me start with uh, this one. Can you please give some examples about the use of functional fibers in dairy alternatives? So indeed, we've seen um, that we can use rice ingredients, but we can use, of course, also our functional fibers in dairy alternative products. So you can use, for example, inulin oligofructose or our short-chain fructo oligosaccharides. Um, so uh, they are all fibers, so you can use them, of course, uh, to make fiber claims. Um, and then you could also use them to improve the creamy mouthfeel of your products, to reduce the fat, the sugar or calorie level. Um, and of course, as mentioned before, uh, you can also make several nutrition and health claims, such as source of fiber, high fiber, uh, improved digestive health, prebiotic, reduced blood glucose response. And again, this will depend on the legal conditions of use in your country. And our fibers, um, they can be used in several dairy alternative products such as in plant-based drinks, in uh, vegetable and fermented drinks, um, spreads, sorry, um, in plant-based desserts and frozen desserts. Um, and all these products, they will have a smooth and creamy mouthfeel and of course a pleasant taste. Our Beno Technology Center has developed many recipes, thus in case that you're interested to receive more information about a specific product, please feel free to contact us uh, via our website uh, www.benu.com. Uh, www and now, um, Jolien, um, I think this could be an interesting question for you to answer. Um, so people say often that they are driven by health when they choose plant-based, but why exactly do they find these products more healthy? Good question indeed. Um, reasons why can absolutely depend and be different for uh, each product category. But in the case of dairy alternatives and vegan chocolate, like we focused on today, I would say they are very often perceived by consumers as being lower in fat, uh, lower in sugar and calories overall. And at the same time, we know consumers uh, would appreciate if they could contain more nutrients, some benefits like having some fiber inside or proteins. And these are not uncommon messages uh, on dairy alternative products. Uh, about plant-based proteins in specific, um, as most of you know, they generally already have a more healthy halo than animal derived ones. So you can certainly have the opportunity to promote additional health benefits. And we've also often, um, uh, seen uh, like in the health claims that we tested is that for instance an easy to digest message ranked at the top um, so those, this can also be a reason for people to consider it as more healthy as easily to digest uh, rather than a full dairy-based product these are definitely elements i think we need to consider when developing new products so uh, what's so interesting about our chicory root fiber, for instance, is that this is the single ingredient that you can support sugar, fat and calorie reduction with, while also closing the famous fiber gap at the same time and even bring a digestive health or prebiotic message. And I've seen in the meantime also one other question I could answer. So. Um, you just mentioned wheat proteins as a plant-based source, yes. In meat alternatives, how is this being perceived? Well, wheat is one of those plant-based sources we've tested in our plant-based survey. And according to our numbers, about two and three consumers um, globally find that an appealing source. So it is scoring well. And this is mainly because wheat is a rather familiar ingredient, I would say, and something we know. Uh, if it's a product or an ingredient, 
we know that consumers are more accepting to it and to see it also in various applications. Talking specifically about our textured wheat proteins, uh, we source our wheat only in Europe and uh, especially also only in the most neighboring countries to Belgium where the production takes place. As we know that sustainability is also a reason to buy into plant-based, so that's covered. Now, um, Isabel, I see another interesting question perhaps for you to answer. So you were mentioning that you have a new range of faba bean ingredients. Can you please elaborate still a bit more on this? Um, yes. Uh, so at this moment, we have three faba bean products in our food range, uh, which is faba bean protein concentrate, uh, faba bean starch rich flour and faba bean flour. And our faba bean protein concentrate can be used as alternative to animal or other plant proteins. Um, it contains at least 60% uh, proteins on dry matter and it has an excellent amino acid profile. Um, it also has a high solubility and good emulsifying and foaming properties. The fava bean flour and the starch rich flour are a natural source of proteins and fibers. Uh, so our fava bean ingredients can be included in bakery, cereal, uh, dairy alternative and savory applications to make um, gluten free products to increase the protein and fiber intake contribute to, for example, the whitening effect of a plant based coffee creamer, as we saw before in the recipe example uh, and so on. So as you notice, um, we can offer a lot of solutions with our range of ingredients. I wish we had time to present you more about all other product lines and answer remaining questions. But we are coming to the end of this webinar. And as mentioned before, some questions are very specific. Um, so we will come back on these questions afterwards. So don't panic. We've gathered all your questions and we welcome sure back on this and uh, for now um, Jolina and myself would like to thank you for attending this webinar and we wish you a nice day and many fruitful plant-based business opportunities goodbye thank you goodbye